<laughs> I'm now, but I don't drive. I don't it's drive. Better. I'm 90. But I, <laughs> I promise to do my best. <laughs> All right. shaken, not stirred. <laughs> I forgot about Maylox. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> well, well, we'll probably be reminded of Maylox uh, before too long, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> Get our free AARP membership supply right. in the mail. All right. Um, okay. Here we go. This is it. Showtime. Okay. Tuesday. Tuesday yes. showtime, everybody. Locked in and ready to go. Okay, all right. It begins in three, two, one. My loneliness is killing me and I, I must confess, I still believe, still believe. Lubies is temple papply, temple pla, temple papply closed. <laughs> A great pair of nerd glasses in about an hour. This is the morning stream. Guten Morgen, everybody. Welcome back to the morning stream. It is uh, Tuesday, August 25th, 2020. I'm Scott Johnson. That guy right there is Mr. Brian Ibbett Esquire. Hello. That is correct, he is. You ever known anybody with Esquire in their name for real? Or no, that, okay. I really kind of wish I would, right? It feels like they'd be, uh, well, they'd be highfalutin. And but I've they, always wanted to know somebody who I would consider to be highfalutin. Yeah, Esquire would do it. What else? Uh, yeah. If they had like, um, oh gosh, what else? Uh, if they had, uh, if they oh, if they were uh, the third, oftentimes when people oh, are yeah, the third. Yeah, yeah. The thirds, yeah. yes, right. Yeah. Not just juniors. I mean, we you know the world is stinky with juniors, but but give us a third. Yeah, give right? us a third, and we're halfway to home. That's an awesome way to live. That's right. Uh, hey, everybody, welcome to the show. We're glad to be here. It is Tuesday. Uh, later in the show, we'll be graced with the presence of Mr. Uh, Justin Robert Young, which is uh, I have a funny story about that. Uh, not really about Justin, but back in <laughs> 1989 or 88, I can't remember. One of the last vestiges of the 80s. I worked for a guy uh, who had me doing billboards and some other art stuff for pamphlets and things, logos and that kind of yeah. stuff. Okay. It was like my first real paid art gig after high school. Right. And it was nice. It was fun and all that. Anyway, I'd forgotten the guy's name, forgotten all about him, but he was a pretty cool dude. Uh, anyway, I'm going through some old memorabilia the other day, and I found his business card. And his name was Justin Robert Howell. Really? Yeah. So it's not quite Justin Robert Young, but no, I don't know Justin, any other Justin Roberts except for Justin Robert Young. And then I remembered, no, I do know another Justin Robert. It's this guy. That's crazy. Yeah. I like the fact that it's a Justin Howell, Justin Robert Howell the third. You know, it's, it's <laughs> kind of <laughs> a little highfalutin in its own right. A little you know? highfalutin right there. Yeah, that's awesome. This guy had the gnarliest beard to the degree that like we would go eat. And during the time we would have a lunch meeting, he would get pieces, so much food in his beard while we ate that yeah. I could tell the difference between when we got there and when we were done. That's horrible. By that how that, much that he, I yeah. don't need to see, right? Like that's... Uh... It was bad. <sighs> yeah, it was bad. And I think he's probably dead, but I don't know how to, <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to find out. <laughs> I well, did. that makes you a person of interest, doesn't it, Scott? Oh, uh, sorry, not not Howell, How H H O W E. Oh, so, how? I was Howell. thinking Howell. Oh, lovey. Yeah, so lovey. he, so it's he time went. To talk politics, politics, politics. I think I said Howell, and I meant how. Uh, so it's J. So it's J. And he went by. He shortened it by when he would talk to people to J. So J. Robert How. Let's just do a quick look here. I want to see if he's yeah. alive. All right. Well, it looks like. Oh, there's a famous Continental Army officer. That's definitely not him. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. We got a J. Robert Howe. Oh, no, that's Robert J. Howe. That doesn't work. Okay. Well, you know, can't find him. He thought oh. him. He thought himself quite the little auteur, but I, I don't think the internet carried that forward. I think he probably <laughs> No tweets from nope. Justin Robert Howe. Nope. Anyway, uh, so that's happening right. later. Uh, uh, today. Uh, so watch for that. And I got a, uh, got a question for people. This is a homeowner's question, dog owner's question. All right. Brian owns a dog, so maybe you can help me with this. I own a dog. 
I do. Yeah. You get the one dog or the two dogs? I don't remember. Just the one dog. Yeah, and, right. and based on what you're about to tell me, I'll you know, I'll I'll add some stuff we discovered last week or over the weekend. But oh, but please. Oh, good. All right. <laughs> I won't feel alone in my problem here. Um, <sighs> so ours is a little. It's not in the house. It's out of the house, which is good. But here's what happens. So Rainer has this ten. The Jim Rainer, the female dog, she has this tendency to eat sunflower seeds if she can find them, even though there's no sunflower seed in them. It's just the husks of them because, like, my daughter yeah. will eat like a bowl of sunflower seeds, and she'll put the empty shells back in the bowl or in another bowl, and then Rainer will find that bowl, and because it still has the remnants of the flavor of, of the thing or whatever. Yeah. Right. She's like, ah, rah, 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 and she'll eat those. And anytime that happens, we're just like, oh, great. Where's the ticking time bomb? Because she's going to throw it up. She just does. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. Yeah. She's going to throw it up. She just will. Yeah. So right. we usually, you know, find out right away and then take her outside and then let her whatever. Here's what happened. She was outside, unattended. She had apparently had a bowl of these things. And I went out to check on how things are going outside and brought her in and never never thought of it again. Two days later, and we're having 100 degree plus weather here, right? So sun and all that. Mm -hmm. A couple days later, I go back outside and I notice on our nice little porch out there, our, our uh, patio thing we had built, there's a, a what I can only describe as a permanent, petrified, baked in barf patty that looked like it was just like covered in little sunflower shells. Sunflower seeds, like it was um, a sunflower seed cookie. Yeah, it was like really <laughs> bad, and it was, but it was now now it's so you know hard baked into the into the land that I don't know what to do with it. So if, do I just? This is yesterday. So do I just hose it and hope for the best? Do I get down there and scrub it like some kind of weirdo? Do I just let nature take its course and it'll go away oh, anyway yeah. on its you own? Definitely don't want because who knows what you're gonna. Attract as far as like vermin and right. I don't want any bites, vermin. No vermin. And yeah, exactly. No, you don't want to do that. I don't want. Vermin. Uh, you got a shovel, right? Yeah, don't I got you a, have a shovel. shovel? Oh, yeah, I could shovel. There's a good one. Shovel it into a grocery bag. Tie that grocery bag up real tight. Throw it in the trash can. Okay. There you go. All right. Bob's. Yeah, you. You know what? Truly, I actually have an Uncle Bob. Do you know that? Oh, <laughs> really? And mm -hmm. then one that hosed the crap off of that. Of that uh... <laughs> Yeah, no, he's, uh, I don't know where he is. He was not a very uh, friendly uncle, and he kind of disappeared when I was younger, but I did have an Uncle Bob. Uh, anyway, so Bob is my uncle. That's my story. I'm sticking with it. Yeah, uh, I don't think I'm even going to add my story. <laughs> oh, yeah, tell me what you did. So what happened? Well, we went to the, we went out on our friend Amy's boat on Saturday, or on uh, Sunday, and yeah. Daisy, um, you know, she, she was home for a little bit of time, but the kids came over. It's the last weekend of them in their current apartment. They're moving to a new apartment, which includes a washer and dryer. And so, um, but we've been letting them come over and, and use our washer and dryer on Sundays. Yeah. And, uh, but we were gone, said, oh yeah, come over, use the washer and dryer, no problem. They came over, hung out, um, ate some McDonald's, ate some pulled pork, whatever. Ate, dug through the fridge, found everything that they wanted. That happens. And then, uh, um, and then finished doing the washing, but didn't finish the last batch of clothes to dry. Now the, the dryer, the, the droning of the dryer kind of annoys, uh, Daisy. She doesn't like the sound of the. Doesn't oh, like the sound of the dryer, like the tumbling She's, and the the, that the sound. tumbling, yeah. the right, and then it also plays a little tune when it's done, or something like that. Yeah, and she really doesn't like that. She doesn't like any appliance that makes any sort of beeping noise. I get that. And uh, so uh, both of those things got to her, and we have this big circular Costco bed that we bought her. Mm -hmm. Big old fluffy bed. She had her toys. I don't know which came first because ne neither thing was on there when we left by chance, but uh, when we left uh, 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 that day, that morning. Okay. Um, she had her toys scattered all over the bed. So yeah. like her little alligator stuffed animal. She has a little, a little tabby cat stuffed animal, um, a little chew toy. She had those on the bed right next to each one was a turd. Like she walked a little bit, plopped a boot, plopped a poop, then walked a little <laughs> bit, plopped a poop, then walked a little bit, plopped a poop next to each toy as if to like either blame the toys yeah. or just uh, the, the likely scenario is just random chance. But it was, it was just so perfect. It was like, wow, why, how did you poop right next to each toy? Yeah. That's impressive. So, 
it's it's a very uh very strategic yeah. <laughs> placement of poop but anyway so uh that was a fun thing to come home to after a long day on the boat and the sun and the heat i yeah. just want to go lay on the couch fire up the tv and just flatten out and it's like no no i gotta you got poop clean the poop up and yeah. then i've got to take the cover off of the uh the the dog bed and then we're gonna wash the dog bed and then wash the you know Use this other stuff on the pillow inside, just in case. Yeah. There's no fun. None of it was fun. These Scott. dogs don't think of us when they do these things. They're not thinking about what we have to deal with and what we have to do. It, these... was, it was complete. It was, uh, if I had to rate it on a scale of, of fun, zero fun, Scott, is what it was. It was zero fun. Well, then tell me how fun this next thing in our notes is, which I'm freaked out about. I have no <laughs> idea what this is. Fantasy Island. So, uh, you know how I like to have some stuff for, for recommendals. Yeah. I've got stuff for recommendals tomorrow. This is not one of those things, but because it's a special right now, you can rent it on uh, Amazon and iTunes for 99 cents. We decided to check out the Bloomhouse remake, the movie reboot of Fantasy Island starring oh. Michael Pena. I, for and, I uh, forgot this happened at all. A lot of people did. I forgot it happened too. They were like, oh yeah, Fantasy Island. Oh, let's watch that. Yeah. How was this? thing uh it was so bloom house um basically you can see in my notes i called it a recommendal because it's both a wreck and it's mental <laughs> <laughs> and i spelled it wreck and mental wow um no it's it is uh it is so bloom house it hurts like it is the most bloom housey bloom house thing you're ever gonna see um michael pena makes a great rourke they oh, have that's who he is? I didn't realize that's who he was. I thought maybe yeah, he was the little guy, but I guess not. Who's the little nope. who, who plays the little guy? <laughs> there's no there's no little guy. There's, there's no there's, little guy? There's, there's no, no tattoo? Oh. What are we I don't doing? want to say anything cuz it might be uh it might be a cute little nod that might be one of the, one of the more enjoyable things in the film. Okay. Um <laughs> Free hotel room is rating my poop stories. Not he's disappointed in my poop story. Sorry, oh, free hotel room. Man, I'm glad he's here to rate it though. It's nice to well, see you there, I've Bob. Got, listen, there's the actual physical, tangible poop that came out of my dog, and then there's the visual poop that came out of my TV last <laughs> night when we watched Bloom House's <laughs> Fantasy Island. Oh man, that bums me out because sometimes Bloom House hits it, and sometimes they don't. And uh, uh, you know what? It's for 99 cents, I feel like I feel like I don't feel like we didn't get our money's worth. I felt like we got more than 99 cents worth of entertainment, and I don't feel like, well, there's two hours I'm never going to get back because you got Michael Rooker who is uh, starting to migrate into Woody Harrelson territory. I like Michael Rooker. Yeah, oh, I'm a fan. Okay, um, it's right. got uh, the 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 woman who plays Katie Keene on. Um, CW, I can't remember her name. Oh, uh, 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 not Lucy, Lucy Hale. Plop, Lucy Hale, that's something it. like Lucy that. Plop. Lucy Plop. Lucy Hale, that's it. Lucy Hale. <laughs> Lucy. Lucy Plop. Lucy Allen Hale Jr. That's her. No, that's right. Uh, it's also got uh, the blonde woman Portia Doubleday, which is the greatest name ever. The blonde was, woman. Uh, <laughs> the blonde woman. She's uh, she was the girlfriend on Mister Robot. Oh, I like her. She's cool. Yeah, she's good. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I like her a lot. So, I mean, actually, she's awesome. It's, it's got a pretty good cast, yeah. right? It's got uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's got a decent decent group of people. Maggie Q. Not, didn't we just see Maggie? Oh, Q Maggie. And, we did just see Maggie Q in something. I can't remember what it was. Film sack. It was see. uh oh yeah, uh, the, was uh, priest priest. Remember? Right. That's right. Yes, yeah, she was the the only woman in the entire film. No, yeah. I take that back. Madchen Amik <laughs> was in there as well. <laughs> um, and then it's got um. The Asian actor, I'm pulling it up here. Jimmy O. Yang. Jimmy O. Yang, yeah. who you know from uh, Space Force and uh, Silicon Valley. He's, he's I, I like him in just about everything. Yeah, he's good. And, and if you can handle, do you want the, you want the spoiler? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so stuff happens on the island. It's dark and it's like, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, oh, everybody gets their fantasy. But just like in the TV show, oh, no. Uh, it's uh, it turns dark because you be careful what you wish for. You might actually get it. Yeah. And uh, uh, so stuff happens, and he ends up actually staying on the island as the new sidekick of uh, Mr. Rourke, Michael Pena. Oh. And but his name in the in the movie is Brax. 
And he says, well, I, uh, Brax is such a weird name. Is, uh, do you have a nickname? And he says, well, no, I mean, you know, I've had a bunch of nicknames over the years. And then I got drunk when I was in college and had this put on me. And he lifts up his shirt and it's a tattoo that says <laughs> tattoo. And then the camera pans back. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Wow. That's weird. That's a weird thing. <laughs> what was Deep Roy busy? Like, what's the problem here? You could have gotten somebody. <laughs> I could have totally gotten D oh, Deep Roy would have been such a great pick. He would have been. He's too so creepy anyway. and everything. So you didn't tell me. So that, there you uh, go. You didn't tell me Kim Coates is in this playing somebody named oh, Devil I Face. Kim Coates. Devil. Yeah, Kim, what kind of Kim name is? What kind of character name is Devil Face? I need to know more about he's, that. He's uh, there's a bunch of uh, gangsters that show up at one during one of the fantasies and. Uh, they all have masks on, and one of them is and is Kim Coates, and he's got he's wearing a devil face mask. He's the leader of the gangsters, oh, and so he, okay. he's he's rocking this uh, horrible Russian accent. I think Russian. <laughs> he's that... rocking some weird accent. It's like yo, you want the you want they should put you in box and kill you <laughs> or something like that. It's really bad. Does he ever say? Have you ever never, seen paper? He never says that. Never mentions paper. Sadly. Ah, shoot. Well. You can only hope when you see Kim oh, Coates wow. in the movie. J.K. Grabber says in the trivia, Jason Bloom wanted Nicolas Cage to play Mr. Rourke, but Cage passed on the role. And Whoa. that's that's saying something because I don't think Nicolas Cage passes on anything. Mm -mm. He's he's usually all in it to win it. I'm a little surprised Michael Pena agreed because he's in some decent stuff. That guy's all right. Nothing yeah. wrong with that dude. Uh, American yeah. Hustle, Crash, End of Watch. I love that. He was an Ant-Man. Right. Ant-Man. Yeah. Come on. He's he's fantastic. And he's one of my favorite things about the movie Ant-Man. Yeah, he's an, he's an MCU guy. we got a couple MCUers. Michael R R Rooker in there. Yondu uh, in there. You got... Uh, that's it. That's all. That's a, that's the only one. <laughs> that's as far as as far as the recognizable names. Yeah, yeah. but you got you your see, your you never saw Man and Wasp, right? Still haven't. Oh my gosh! You know what? Yeah. The other day I hovered on that for a second because I was like, oh, what should I watch? Oh yeah, maybe I still haven't seen this. Maybe I'll do this, and then I just I don't know why I didn't why I didn't watch. It. I just and you still to haven't it. seen Captain Marvel, and you still haven't seen uh, Parasite. And yeah, and I'm sure you've watched you've done another binge watch of The West Wing since we last <laughs> talked about it. No, because it feels too foreign now to watch the West Wing. I can't do it. <laughs> but I watched like uh, um, uh, what did I what did I see the other day, or what was I gonna watch? And then oh, I almost wa watched the Dark World, the 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 Thor one. I oh, haven't seen. Thor one, okay. Because that's the only other MCU besides the ones you mentioned that I haven't seen. Right. And I ended up um, watching. A th I ended up watching something that I'm gonna recommend tomorrow. Okay. That so I won't spoil it what it is now. But I'm. Uh, it's, it's just like this weird thing where I get really close to these. And think, oh, maybe yeah. now's the night, and then I don't know what happens. I don't know why that happens. I know what I mean. Part of it is that you know that those are going to be on there forever, right? Because they're Disney. It's on Disney Plus. It's not like it's going anywhere. I think and that's so it. It's kind of this confident feeling of like, eh, I can watch that any time I want. I think that's it. I do it with Netflix too. Like Umbrella Academy, yeah. haven't seen an ounce yeah. of it, and and I know it's for me, and I know I need to watch it. But in my head, I go, well, that's never going away. So go watch something that's going away. It's weird. Yeah, I can't wait to um, – something I'm, something I'm going to talk about tomorrow on Recommendals kind of has a Umbrella Academy-ness to Ooh. it. It's a, I hope it's the thing I'm thinking of because I saw it on I Netflix it and got excited. And I, I want to see, I think, what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. By the way, Dice Tomato says – the, the, he says, it's, skip both those movies. They're both underwhelming. Oh, well, okay. What's Dice it? Tomato, which is really weird because uh, What's Dice Tomato almost always loves everything. Oh, like, yeah, no, he's Dice so Tomato's positive. Just a voice of positivity. The biggest cheerleader in our <laughs> chat room. Like, no matter what we bring up, Dice Tomato's like, oh, that is the greatest. I love that thing. I just want to know what underwhelming means. That's all. <laughs> it's, that's not, it's uh, not under, but oh, more inside whelming. Inside it's whelming. Like, Got it. Yeah, it's. It's uh, <laughs> the whelming was coming from inside the house. I see. Yes. Right. Listen, when you uh, when you don't like everything, Dice Tomato, your reviews get kind of <laughs> filtered with like. <laughs> well, no, he didn't like it. Then I'll probably love it. One of these days, we're gonna find out something he loved, and it's gonna blow our minds. I'd yeah. actually like to know if there was something because he didn't like de uh, devs. I almost called it Deus. He didn't like devs. Oh, you almost did. Uh, did you? Mm. Yeah. Right. What? What? Uh, that movie's so well, good. if you don't say so anything, good. then it's not a spoiler. No, you're right. Uh, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> tomato. What, they give us something you like. What's something that you like? Yeah, just lay it out for us. Anything. Like um, He says, I like things in all caps. All right, give us a thing. What do you like? You like uh, 
Uh, he likes Watchmen. No, uh, he doesn't say anything yet. He's he's thinking. Yeah, he's putting it's it thinking. together. It takes a while. It kind of takes a while to get to the things that he likes. Yeah, we're we're going okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, 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 you'd think he'd be able to type something fairly quickly under, but I like things, and that was like twelve messages ago. Yeah. All right. Still, Good. He likes, All right. Well, he just like, remove you know that email. He must like TMS because he's here. Okay. That's true. Okay. Good point. I think he may not Does love he it. He may not love it. He might. Does he though? He might just like it. <laughs> uh, he says teenage bounty hunter is great i'm watching that now teenage bounty hunter teenage yes. bounty hunters hunters let's see teenage bounty. hunters on the half shell hunter powers <laughs> hold on let's look uh teenage bounty hunters tv series 2020 uh after joining forces of the veteran bounty hunter six uh 16 year old fraternity or fraternal twin sisters sterling and blair Drive into the uh, world of ball skipping baddies while still navigating the high stakes of teenage life. Uh, wow, it's, it's rated it, well. Uh, it's considered it is, a yeah. comedy crime and it's also, drama. Also, for me, it's got a ninety-eight percent match of something that I'd like. Yeah, I, I actually sounds kind of like my jam a little bit. It's raunchy, quirky, and irreverent. Okay, you know okay. what? I'm adding it to my list as well as um, something that I know. Something that's well, I'm not. I'm not going to say much more than. It's recommended to me, hmm. but there was some reviews of it that like say it's not it's not as good as it could have been. Okay, that sounds like but, everything, right? Everyone's got a opinion. Yeah, everybody's got a thing. Well, yeah. from Fantasy Island to Dolly Parton, I have this email. <laughs> Sorry, that's a great segue. Uh, from Charo the, to Dolly. <laughs> from Charo to Dolly. Uh, the doll on that Dolly ride thing. There's like the log flume or whatever it is. Um, yeah, Dollywood. Yeah, in the in her theme park. Yeah, her theme park, which I acted all surprised about because I really truly was. I didn't realize it was yeah. like a theme park. But anyway, Allie wrote in and says, uh, according or uh, the subject being Dollywood, says just wanted to let Brian know that the log flume ride at Dollywood got torn down years ago. We were all devastated. So no log flume at Dolly's. And I don't remember why That's, that came up, but you, you'd said something about log flume. What was the deal? Because it was a decent, like, that. The, the best parts of the Dollywood Park were the uh, the roller coaster and the uh, the log flume. And apparently, yeah, if that's gone, then what's the point? I yeah. guess they still have the, the roller coaster. Oh, look at that roller coaster. That wasn't there when we were there. That was a new one. They've got a, uh, they've got a roller coaster that's a bunch of eagles yeah. with their wings outstretched and the seats are on either side of the track oh whoa uh are your legs hanging uh, loose on the outside like you're like you're uh, yeah ooh. here i'm gonna put i'll put it in the chat room and that way other people can see it and you can see it okay i, I can put it, it right in, here. in our discord too if you want to see it there no i can totally see it this is good okay um oops I accidentally refreshed our notes all right there we go oh yeah look at that uh, see i don't like the ones where your feet are just loose like that that freaks me out Really, you don't like the dangle? Oh. <laughs> I, the dangle. The dangle is. I mean, I mean, I'll do it, and it's a thrill, and it's all that. But they, it really is disconcerting to me. It makes me feel like I'm not securely placed in my seat, which I guess is the point, right? They're trying to make you feel, you know. Yeah, feel I like mean, you're, you, you ride that for the for the thrills. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. TripAdvisor like ranks Dollywood one of the best in the world, but it doesn't say one of the best what's in the world. Yeah, best. Yeah, if it's it's absolutely the best Dollywood in the world because it's the only one, right? Exactly, exactly. Wow, I'm looking at they've really added a lot of rides. So, kind of a bummer that they lose the uh, the flume uh, that the log flume, but they have something called Daredevil Falls, which is one of those rides where it's it's probably one circular, like one oval track without mm -hmm. uh, a lot of variance, and at the end of the track it goes up and then comes down and creates a massive splash. Oh yeah, look at this. I see that now. Dizzy disc. This looks really nice there. Come and ride the coat of many colors. It's kind of cool. Drop line, okay. Dragon flyer. Yeah. Does, does she ever show up and just sing? You know, like. I'm sure she does. I'm hey sure everybody, she, uh... I'm gonna sing a song. Working <laughs> nine to five. <laughs> just do that. Yeah. How come there aren't? I would totally, if I were her, I would totally do rides named after my songs. Yeah, Jolene, it would be like some kind of drop, right. you know, because you're getting dumped. Right. So it's like Jolene. They should have named that roller coaster Jolene because it splits you and your partner up on either <laughs> side of the roller coaster. And then Jolene would be, like, you'd have little little uh, mannequin Jolene's that would be riding in between you, like <laughs> splitting you up. Uh, and then the music just, you have that song on repeat just the whole ride. That's amazing. Yeah, I love exactly. that idea. Uh, all right, finally, 
Turns out we are sheep. And okay. I don't mean right. that in the dismissive sort of jerky internet way. <laughs> uh, this is an email from Cormac. Not Cormac, Cormac. Ma- not Cormac McCarthy, okay. the famous author. Somebody else. Uh-huh. Good. Uh, it says, Cormac, the 10-year-old listener. Oh, okay. I like a- that name. Yeah. I don't know if he's 10 years old or he's listened for 10 years. Hmm. Oh. Hold on a second. I think he's... No, I think he's a... Uh, well, nobody's listened to us for 10 years. But... <laughs> not quite, right? We're not there yet. No, not quite. But so I think he's actually 10 because of the last, the very, the last PS. Oh, I think yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I didn't think that of is, that. He is actually 10. Okay, awesome. 10-year-old. Hey, 10-year-old Cormac. Cormac's a cool name. That's a bad, It is a cool name. Yeah. Not a name for a kid your age. Do something right. cool with that name, like become an author or, uh, or something like do something cool. really cool with that name, Cormac. Cormac. You're all set for the apocalypse when there's like, <laughs> when you know. the walls fell. Yeah. <laughs> when, uh, when the apocalypse comes and we all go full Mad Max, you're all set. You're, that's a name yeah. people will respect in the wastelands. It's perfect. Cormac owns this territory. Leave. <laughs> right. Who runs Bonner Town? <laughs> Cormac does. All right. Hello. A few months back, I sent a question to the Boob Show about what VR headset I should get. Uh, you replied with the Oculus Quest, so I went for that. I managed to save up enough money to get it, and it's amazing. Thank you so much for your help. I decided to get the 64 gigabyte because the other one was pretty expensive. So far, I've got Beat Saber, Island Time VR, Roblox, Roblox, Roblox rather, and Minecraft. Do you have any other recommendations? Anyway, if yes. you want to read this email, I listen to Boop, The Boop Show and TMS. Feel free to reply on either. Just for fun, I decided to tell you... Let's uh, see. Oh, sorry. I decided to tell you that I put the entire TMS cast in my Minecraft server as pet sheep. So far, <laughs> I have Scott... Uh, let's see. Scott 2? Don't ask about Scott 1. Oh, interesting. Oh, geez. So Scott oh, 1 is gone. Scott, little Scott 1 got eaten by a creeper. Brian is in there. So you're in there just as Brian. Uh-huh. The just other Brian. Brian. He's got to call him the other Brian. <laughs> uh, Randy and Gidget is in there. Nice. Uh, I'm planning to add more. Uh, one person made a tiny replica of my base and stole Scott and Gidget and put them into his. I found them and got them back. I'm planning to have revenge once I figure out who did it. I will find you. I, I will take revenge, he says. <laughs> I have no idea how, how that game works. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit weird. Depends on your server, I think. But anyway, anyway, I'm blathering on, so I'm going to get uh, get end it here. I love TMS and the Boop Show, and I listen to them every night. All right, well, peace. P.S. It's fine if you swear on TMS and Boop. My dad does it all the time. All right, so he's 10 years old. Man, he seems like a smart 10-year-old. Nice. I'm impressed. For sure, uh, yeah. But how do you feel about being a, a sheep? You right I don't that? mind being a sheep, but I want screenshots. Oh, yeah. I want to see what I want to see what our, our sheep look like. Or do we just look like sheep? I or think, do we look like <laughs> Brianized versions of sheep? I, my, my guess is unless he's gone nuts with some sort of, you know, hand texture modding uh, or something, or something. Uh-huh. they're probably just the regular Minecraft sheep. All right, well, shoot. But they'll have our names but above how them. How can you tell? Right. Yeah. How do you know the difference? Is the yeah. is Brian if he st- stole? If somebody <laughs> stole Scott and Scott and Gidget sheep. Yeah. Well, that's how you know the difference. The Gidget sheep has an has an accent. <laughs> the Gidget sheep sometimes is a Lucy sheep from Oklahoma. That's right. And the, your sheep is all shaved, <laughs> like totally shorn, nothing on him, no hair. Right. Okay. I like this a lot. Mine's fat and angry all the time. So it's great. Uh, anyway. uh, by the way, recommendation, I'm just going to give you one. Yeah. Super Hot VR. That game, that oh, is yeah. my favorite thing I've ever played on any three uh, on any VR platform. I can't argue with that. That's pretty strong, Paul. Um Yeah. I, he's already got Beat Saber. Those are my two those are always my two picks right there. Um Pistol Whip's pretty good. Yes, Pistol Whip is good. Beat uh, Saber. Uh, but they're all kind of it's what's funny is those three all kind of satisfy a similar like you're playing in Tron World kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, which I, I like that a lot about some VR experiences. But the VR experiences that try too hard to be realistic are the ones that kind of bum me out. I don't mm-hmm. like as much. Um, what else would I say would be good for a ten-year-old? Even I can't. Think uh, of bait. Else. Oh, bait's bait's very good. Fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just yeah. nice, calm, cool fishing game. Yep. Just mellow. Yep. Do some fishing. Upgrade your fishing. Go find the better fish in that one place. Yep. Come back. Turn it in, find out you can get a cooler fish somewhere else. Like, there's something about that game. It's very good. Yep. Yep, I'm glad you recommended that to me because I never, ever would have picked that up otherwise. Yeah, it was a surprise to me as well. I just, it was so cheap. I just thought, I'll try it. And then I was like, oh, this is one of my favorite things in here. All right. Well, we've done all we can do at the top of the show. Now this. I don't watch the news. Time for the news brought to you by. 
Talk Geekly. If you dig comic books, video games, and other geeky subjects, be sure to check out Talk Geekly on all podcasting platforms. I am Pendragon and job for a Cody. Eh, host the podcast that brings you the latest and the greatest from comic books. That was capitalized to video games and so much more from the geek culture. Talk Geekly gives you Thursday throwbacks focusing on classic comic arcs and new comic Mondays where the newest, hottest books get the holy lederhosen spoiled out of them. <laughs> Check out Talk Geekly on all social media platforms as well as your major podcast platforms or plat roms. Plat and as always, <laughs> keep it geekly. Plat roms. Plat roms. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like fake technology in a sci fi movie. A plat rom. Oh, <laughs> Captain, the plat roms have invaded the bottom of the ship. It will cost you 11 plat roms. <laughs> it's some shit, some uh, quirk would demand of you. Quirk currency, it, exactly. Yeah. Some <laughs> Cardassian currency. That's amazing. Yes, it will cost you 11 plat roms. That's so good. Uh, all right, we got a story here about a, a dude. What uh, discovered his wife's affair? That happens. People, you know, they have oh, an affair. No. Somebody yeah, finds out. But yeah. the big difference here is he spotted her in the act on Google Maps. Whoops! Oh, that ain't going away anytime soon. Nope. When Google launched Maps, or uh, launched back in 2005, it didn't. Oh, Maps! I thought they were saying Google itself. That was 98. Anyway, when Google Maps launched back in 95 or 2005, uh, it made the world a far smaller place. Actually, 2005 seems late. It does, yeah. Doesn't it? Were we still doing MapQuest before this? We must have. Tina still uses the phrase MapQuest. It's funny. She doesn't use the pro the program, but she she you know she talks about well I'll just MapQuest to find directions there. I'm saying MapQuest. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Like print out and put in the passenger seat your MapQuest yeah. path that you've got to take? Yeah. I mean, eleven didn't they... <laughs> pages to get to the Costco across town. Didn't they get bought by Yahoo anyway? And then. I think they just got absorbed. Are they Probably, still around? Yeah. MapQuest. Let me just see. Official MapQuest. Okay. Dice Domain, how do you feel about MapQuest? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah, well, let's, let's get his hot take on the, on the MapQuest. <laughs> oh, MapQuest still a thing, and I guess they got apps and everything now. So, all right. It's still an option. You can do, yeah. you yeah. Can do MapQuest if you want to, but... My memory is the minute Google Maps came out, we were done. <laughs> we pretty much all switched over. We were yeah. done. Anyway, uh, the tool allows uh, users to visit most any location on Earth at ground level, although almost invariably ends up starting or staring, <laughs> heading straight into your home. Uh, it also captures images of people going about their daily lives, resulting in some hilarious photo fails and a few suspicious scenes. But one man was left heartbroken when the Street View tool captured his wife and another man and exposed their affair. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, the images went viral on Facebook. Shows a row of benches on a pedestrian path in Lima, Peru. And he's sitting on her lap. So it's nothing, you know, it's not like, <laughs> oh, uh, they're nude or anything. It's just they're hanging out. That's right. Yeah, his head is, his. he's laying down on one of the benches. His head is in her lap. Yeah. And, uh, and they're how just did the, chilling. How did the, uh, I'm looking at this, there's, there's, uh, Metal bars on either side of his path. How did the little Google street vehicle make it through there? Oh, yeah. Is this guy like on a... Uh, well, I know they do walking path stuff now. they do now, walking so. as well? Okay, so that's how they must have But that means one. some dude walked by with a rig, you know? Yeah. Like a yeah. film rig, either on his head or <laughs> holding it. So they must have... Well, she does look kind of surprised in the second view. Like, <laughs> oh! Yeah. <laughs> I've been busted! <laughs> yeah, but Enrique looks asleep. I think that dude's out. Yeah. Anyway, busted. You're done. No more, no more sneaking oh. around on that guy. No, no more snoo snoo for you. No snoo snoo, snoo snoo, snoo snoo. Uh, moving on. Remains of a worker trapped inside a New Orleans casino was removed after ten months. Ooh, I got they this. For the loosest. They have the loosest <laughs> slots and corpses uh, of all the casinos. <laughs> They're just falling out of there. Here's the thing, though. I got this article, or I found this one, because I thought of you. This is the reason I did it, because you like casinos. Of course you did, because of the word casino. That's yes. it. That's the only Make connection. Make sure to come to our midnight uh, maggots and shrimp buffet. Yep, that's the one. Bodies of one of the construction workers killed when the Hard Rock Hotel collapsed last year was removed Saturday. Bodies of Jose Ponce, Ponce Aurelio, age 63. I think that's areola. <laughs> is it areola? It is. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an areola? Uh, anyway, his name is a nip slip. 
uh, 63 years old. And then Quin Quin Gon Jin, no Quin Yun Wimberly, age thirty six. Quin Yun Wimberly, yeah. Uh, the thirty six have been trapped in the rubble since the building collapsed, uh, October twelfth, twenty nineteen. I don't remember the news about this casino collapse. I don't either. Jeez. Um. Anyway, Friday's crew started cutting and sawing through the stuff, and it's when they finally found the bodies. But that's just crazy. Ten months, really, really. Yeah. You think they worked harder on getting Kip Winger's uh, guitar pick out of there first? Like uh, getting all the memorabilia? Oh my God. Ingve Melmstein's uh, broken bass string is. Uh... It's exactly the stuff they have at those places. Brian yeah. is so right. It's like, it's not like, oh, there's George Harrison's guitar. It's not like that. Right. No. It's, you know, <laughs> exactly. Some third there's rate. A- Thing. Yeah, here's a drum a drum pad once used by right said Fred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes me laugh. Except for the deaths, those are sad. Well, yes. yes yeah, we feel sad. bad about those guys. Yeah. But uh, also, just ten months is a long time to be digging uh, to take to do a thing, and I just yeah. I don't know why that took so long. It just seems crazy to me. I'm like, surprised we didn't hear about this though. The in New Orleans, jeez. Yeah, like a Hard Rock Hotel just collapsed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Were they? Now I have to. And know. they were construction workers, so were they, was were they in the process of building the Hard Rock Hotel, and it collapsed? And well, see, that's a good question. Was it new? Oh, it looks like it was unfinished. Okay. Um. So okay, back in October, there. Here's a news article. Okay, it was under construction. Um. Let's see. Crews are scrambling to find two missing workers in the Hard Rock Hotel wreckage before another collapses. They're worried there would be a chain reaction. This is back. This is dated October twelfth, twenty nineteen. Yeah. Uh, but that's when the collapse was. Yeah. Yeah. It says search rescue teams of drones. They tried to do stuff with dogs and they couldn't figure it out. I just don't know why it took ten months. But um. Let's see. Mm, uh, I'm trying to find the portions of the building came crashing down on Monday. It, do, it, it doesn't say what, why. It doesn't say why. Yeah, no. I'm going to blame it on the humidity because I've right. been the there and it's hot. Okay. It was the E string, not the bass string. People are like, uh, Brian, uh, Ingve Malmsteen oh my is a guitar player, not a bassist, so he would not have a bass string. Are we really getting corrections about Ingve Malmsteen in yep, the chat room? Yep, we are. Yep. That's amazing. That's amazing. Of course, of course we do, right? I love that. You guys never change. <laughs> like for real. <laughs> That's a hell of a correction. I love it. <laughs> it's fine. It's yeah, fine. It's fine. All right. Moving on. We got a vampire story. It's about an actual vampire. Do you know these were real? Do you know those are real vampires, Brian? That they don't that they're well, real? I know that there are people who I'm filling up my coffee with my oh, carafe. Oh wait, There's how's this carafe? Okay, so you have the carafe, but you still have the heating of the thing, right? You still do the yeah, yeah. yeah. The um, I still have the Ember coffee mug. Gotcha. Keeping my coffee at a nice 135 degrees. Nice. That's how I like my hot tub too. By the way, little container of uh, fat-free um, uh, coffee make creamer. Nice. Fat-free, sugar-free free, yeah. uh, creamer. And get your, uh, little, get your little sample there next to you. There. See if I, let's see if I did it right. Let's okay. see. Okay. Do a little quick test. <laughs> I'm not usually a slurp drinker, but I do it for the for the foley work. Yeah. Oh, it's perfect. Is it? Oh, it's delicious. Okay, yes. all right. Remind okay. me that what's your coffee de jour, de jour at the moment? What do you uh... right now? It is a uh, Starbucks Pike Place roast. Pike Place roast. Pike Place roast. It's a medium. I think it's a medium um, blend. You, you medium get that at the weight. Starbucks that you just buy it there. Or? Yeah, like so. I took back. You know, I had the the Ember mug that I bought at Starbucks and took back to Starbucks. Yeah. And uh, instead of giving putting the money back on my card, uh, they gave me a Starbucks uh, return money card thing. Like basically, it's a a Starbucks card that's got that amount on it. Oh, like a gift card or that sort a of a gift card. And I and it's like, oh, you know, I, I, there's a there's a coffee place I like a lot better if I'm going to be going out and getting a cup of coffee, a, yeah. a, a pumpkin spice latte, if you will. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever they have. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, oh, you know, I'll get grounds. I'll get grounds and use those in the French press. And so that's what I've been doing. Oh, nice. That's good to know that yeah. it's good. I mean, everyone always wants to just, you know, 
drag uh, Starbucks every time they're mentioned because they're like, ah, oh, it's bad coffee or it's they're too corporate if they sold out or whatever. But yeah, they make- oh, there you know what? It's expensive. Like getting the getting the coffee, um, the the made drinks gets pretty expensive, especially if you do it like on a daily basis. But uh, get the coffee beans, and uh, and there you go. Do you, uh, when you make your own make coffee, your, do you, uh, do you, do you use French words to talk how big stuff is and things like that or Italian words like venti? No, 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 I don't. I, I say, uh, the only French word I use is French press. Ah. And, uh, <laughs> put some hot water <laughs> into the French press <laughs> for a minute. Oh, it's like Patrick's, press down. it's like Patrick's here. I can't even tell the difference. Oh. I can't even tell the difference. Do you guys hear that? That's scarf as a filter. That's Patrick Bejar right there. Do you guys hear it? <laughs> it really, really is. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. He'll be on the instance today, so watch for that, everybody. Oh, tell him I said hello. I will. He's been gone for a few weeks, so uh, it'll be nice to have him back. He, he really likes that Avengers um, uh, PlayStation 4 game. Ooh, does he now? On, he does. I saw him playing it. He He did a lot of work to be able to play it on his laptop when he was traveling okay with a playstation controller using the whole like remote link ps4 remote link thing and uh uh he loves it well i don't know if he loves it he likes it enough to go through all the work to play it that surprises me because he was re- when we saw the announcement of it on e3 the year previous uh, and he yeah. and i did that coverage that day he was easily the most uh uh concerned he was among the us there yeah uh-huh. So that's interesting. See, I, I yeah. hear so many different things from so many people. I don't know what to think. Well, you know, I'll give you I'll give you a good review on Tuesday, September first, because that's when I'll be able to start playing it. That's release day, right? That is the seventy-two hour uh, oh, pre-purchase yeah. release day. Early um, people, yeah, that's true. Early people. You're an early person. Well done. Early people. I'll be. <laughs> I'll be taking down Modoc by that day. Nice. <laughs> by that day. <laughs> Just look for the guy with a big head. Can't miss him. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, this story. Always like Patton Oswalt. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of he, uh, well, wait a minute. Yeah, he was gonna do the. He was gonna be the voice of the animated Modoc in the uh, oh. the Disney Plus series. They had three three series. They had a What If series. They had Modoc, and then they had what New Warriors? I think he's perfect. He is perfect. He's perfect for live action for that. Like he's perfect just <laughs> yeah, to be Modoc. You don't even you don't even really need to do any CGI. No. <laughs> you might, you know, just just uh, CGI his body down a little bit to make him a little shrimpy but right. dude, right. he's Modoc. Yeah. That's a great idea. Jeez. But that got canceled? <laughs> what happened with that? I think that got canceled. Oh, that's uh, too bad. It bums me out to hear that. Let's see, Disney Plus. Don't worry, people. We'll talk about vampires. Don't worry. Oh my gosh, there's so much. Uh, Don't worry, vampires are coming. So much. Uh, They're coming. Let's see here. Uh, eight, a Hulu unveil cast that was January. That was a Hulu Marvel deal. Hulu animated cast adds Brooklyn Nine Nine VP stars. Um, well, maybe Brooklyn Nine Nine. Maybe that hasn't been canceled. Oh, I hope it's. Hope oh, I it's hope it's a go. Canceled. I really do. Yeah, that would be great. I I'm, I mean, as goofy as Modoc is, I would love to see them explore Modoc, especially know? right. Exactly. I want to see the day to day life, not when he's just trying to, uh, uh, you know, take over the world. But I want to see, uh, you know, his day to day life. I want to see Modoc making coffee and uh, <laughs> yeah, getting, getting in his car to to drive to AIM. <laughs> yeah, who wouldn't want to see that? Those AIM helmet, uh, you know those AIM helmet things they wear? The helmets the AIM people wear? You know what I'm talking about? They look like trash cans in the well, comics. Like, like, in the, like this guy right here? Yeah, those helmets are stupid. <laughs> I've, I've been reading. I can only see what's directly in front of me. <laughs> I watch. Uh, I watch. Oh, my God, who showed you? <laughs> I'm reading that, that Avengers series, and they're all up in the AIM stuff right now. Yeah. And everybody in an AIM helmet just takes me out of it as soon as i see him i yeah. go okay yeah. freaking you're not <laughs> you're not this isn't working for me square helmet man right um so i'm saying anyway. um i'm not seeing maybe it has not been canceled okay oh god i hope hope that's the case rev, right yeah rev up your consumer eyeballs modoc still happens. that's right uh okay Here's this thing. Oh, real, real fast. John Jagger, if you're listening, I don't know if he is. <laughs> Screw you if you wanted stuff about vampires. Oh, yeah, the other shows were Howard the Duck and uh, 
Tigra and Dazzler or Tigra and Dazzler. Those two got scrapped. Modoc and What If are are still going. Okay, that's the right choice if they're going to cut something. For I, sure, I agree. Yeah. Uh, real quick, John Jagger recommended I read the new uh, or latest run 2018 forward run of the new Venom series. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. usually a little hesitant to care that much about Venom as a as a comic property sure. or as a sure. main focus sort of comic. Uh, man. It's really good. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm super, super surprised. I saw how the much photo like you it. posted, like the uh, then and now of like the old uh, McFarlane Venom versus what Venom looks like these days. Yeah, and, uh, so different, dude. So different. Cool. It's like he just quit going to the dentist or something. Um, but the but yeah, uh, that that was when John piped in and says, "Oh, you got to read the latest the thing of dingy," and I and I did, and it's so far very good it's very good all right vampires i promise this is vampires it. it's, a qu- it's a quick one oklahoma city uh there's a vampire he spit on a police officer and then threatened Uh-oh. to drink his blood oh no yeah. watch out uh ender backwards what was uh, uh, uh dreadnecks. dreadnecks watch out dreadnecks look out dread dreadnecks uh 7-eleven convenience store called uh the police in response to a man who was threatening staff and customers on thursday night the man later identified as james Ped- petty john Ugh. Vampire Petty John. <laughs> For a thousand years. Blah, Petty John. Blah, my name is James Petty John. Blah. Blah. <laughs> I want to drink your blood. You can't Just kill me. me. Mr. Petty John. In the 18th, I was, I was here during the Civil War. <laughs> another, another thing that you've probably had on your list forever that you have not watched. Mm. What we do in the shadows. Oh yeah, Did the you, series. Another. That's another yeah. mark of shame. I need to finally get into that. Do you do you keep a list anywhere? Uh, I do actually. I've got a, okay. a simple notes list that is a mile long of things that I and, and all the things we've talked about today are on it. I just need to do okay. it. Okay, all right. Okay. Don't uh, start. Well, don't watch anything else until you watch something on that li- on that we talked about today. That's, that's your a, that's, that's your homework. Is that my homework? All right, I'll do that. Otherwise, otherwise, I'm going to stop playing Titanfall. I need it. <laughs> I thought you kind of already had it. You hadn't you paused. <laughs> You sort of not playing it now, or are you? I'm playing, playing it. I just went through the. Um, I just went through the like where you're going back and forth between the two time periods, oh. to get through that facility with the giant, the giant robots that step on you, pretty much in just one shot. You. Yeah, that's a cool sequence. It is. They it's handle really cool they sequence. handle that time jump stuff really well. I thought it was. They very do, cool. and you're going through like, oh, this place is on fire. I'll just time jump to when it's not on fire. Oh, there are people shooting at me. Okay, well, I'll get past the fire spot and then I'll flip back to the. That game's a badass game, you guys. It is. It, I'm really enjoying it. Yes, but see, I'm still playing. It's got. Yeah, ass. I believe you. Ooh, her, her. I believe you. Uh, all right, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, all right. I mean, that story was literally about a guy who spit on a yeah, it's police like, officer and claimed he was a vampire. You didn't miss anything, folks. That was all of the vampire story. Yeah, he went into some. The, the big part of it was he went into a fighting stance. He says he was gonna bite the officer, and says out loud, "I'm going to feast on your blood." That's the whole story. That's it. I'm going to break my face with your blood. So another, you know, another reason meth is a bad thing. All right, let's move on. Uh, we're going to take a break, play a song. When we come back, Justin Robert Young will be here. Try to make sense of these couple of weeks of uh, RNC, DNC uh, conventions. Uh, I guess that's not the way to say it because that's like saying national. Right, the uh, or Democratic, Democratic Convention national Convention. Convention, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that'll all come up here in a, uh, in a minute. Brian, do you have a song we can play in the meantime? Well, yes, we go from the RNC. We go from the DNC to the RNC to the DML Conspiracy. Whoa. Uh, this is, uh, they've got a brand new album called An Act of Defiance. Um, a little bit of a uh, Matthew Sweet vibe uh, to these guys, at least to the to the beginning of the song. Less in the, the vocals throughout the song, but more in the chorus for sure. These guys are, they were formerly the DML cartel. And then they, um, uh, like after that band broke up, Dodd Michael Lead, who's the uh, the singer and songwriter, head singer and songwriter, the lead, if you will, uh, pulled a, a few of the members back together to form the DML cartel. Hi, this is Deep Roy from Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Never ending story, uh, Star Wars, Star Trek. Um, woke me for any greetings. Hee ha! Here we go! <laughs> uh-huh. 
This is the morning stream. That's some sweet weed, man. Speaking of Deep Roy, <laughs> no kidding. How uh, how much does it cost to get him on cameo? <laughs> that's where it's from, actually. I found yeah, some. That's what I figured. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I found these weird, uh, some of the weirder cameo like introductions, and his was one of them. And he just seemed like somebody said, "Hey, Deep Roy, come here. We're going to just do this thing." And he wasn't really prepared for it, and he just kind of. I can't remember other movies I was in. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Me for greeting. You think you think you maybe start off with have a list in front of them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not so much. Uh, that was a really cool sound. I like that song yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah, aren't they great? Very cool. Yeah, I'd, I'd listen to more of that. I think. Uh, all right, we're gonna get Justin in here and see what's up with the old Justarino. Justarino. Because just a Reno. Just a wait a minute. Just a wait a minute, everybody, because that time is coming and that time is now. These are their stories. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'm terrible with names. Justin Robert Young joining us from his studios in Oakland, California. Justin, welcome to the show. How are you? Oh, it's good to be here, friends, oh. as always. Oh, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, that makes me very happy to hear it. So, uh, hey, uh, we're in the thick of it right now. Justin yeah. comes on Tuesdays and talks about... The world of politics and what's going on between the battle of the of the parties as we get oh, closer to the, the unconventional conventions. Unconventional, exactly, yeah. Uh, so DNC last week we didn't have a show, so not DNC. D, yeah, DNC. No, no, you got it. You got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I always think I get committee and convention mixed up with those guys. Yeah, but they're the same, right? right. It's weird. It uh, but weird. yeah, yeah, the Democratic National Convention. Mm -hmm. virtually uh, uh, spanning the entire country from Wilmington, Delaware to a set in Los Angeles, apparently switched from the living room or home office of a dude who has switched the Emmys before. Yeah. Uh, there was a great picture of him. He was wearing pants, but not shoes. Uh, <laughs> he had but, quite uh, the setup. Uh, I saw that picture. He's got this amazing array of monitors and stuff, but even at that even at that, I was impressed that he was somehow able to do all that switching and stuff remotely. It was, it was something and, else. And as we've seen, that was a more ambitious concept than the what, what the Republicans have done. The, the Democrats did live shots from across the country, mixed that with recorded stuff, and then, of course, uh, had their one uh, a fake a convention set in Wilmington, Delaware, that was meant to evoke what the set probably would have looked like in Milwaukee had they had the convention. Is that the one the yelling lady was in front of that was yelling yesterday? The the really screamy uh forgot her name. No, 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 no. This is the Democrats that I'm talking about. Oh, gotcha. Uh, okay. uh, uh no, the, the Republicans Democrats don't yell Scott. No, no, yeah, no, yeah. No. The, the the Republicans uh with admittedly a lot less time to plan because remember uh I was supposed to be in Jacksonville right now covering yeah. mm -hmm. a a secondary version of what this was supposed to be. Initially, it was going to be in Charlotte, moved that. They wanted to do it in person, didn't do it in person. And so uh, now they are doing it virtually. But they decided to kind of uh, condense their ability to uh, make mistakes and have effectively two sets. Yeah. Uh, one coming from the White House, and that's where you're going to see speeches starting tonight. And then last night, it was almost exclusively from another set in Washington, D.C., so they'd be at least able to share staff. And uh, I have not seen any reporting on exactly how many of those speeches last night were recorded versus live. Uh, all I know is that uh, it might have been 50-50. And by that, I mean 50 of the speeches might have been recorded and 50 of them might have been live because there were so many speeches. There was a lot. <laughs> yeah, I saw your post yeah. that you put up and I went, yeah, he's right. There's a lot more. I, I guess, like, there there was that preliminary list of speakers, and it looked really small. It looked like, I don't know, 12 people. I guess those are keynote. Um, so we didn't know what yeah. all the filler would be. The filler was was uh, copious. There's tons of it. Like, uh, Well, yeah. You know, I, I think what the Republicans wanted to do is, number one, they uh, uh, reporting from Axios on Monday was, or Sunday, rather, was that Trump hated the Zoom feel yeah. of of the Democratic convention? Yeah. He hated the the glitching, the audio glitching, the 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 video that's very obviously processed for video conferencing. 
he hated uh, uh, the roll call, and you saw that the the Republican version of the roll call was edited on an iPhone while somebody was clearing out lunch. Like it was <laughs> very, very quickly put together. Like and. and not to say that it doesn't mean a lot for everybody that gets to be a delegate at a convention. I know that that means a lot to a lot of people. But uh, remember that a week ago on Tuesday, the Democrats effectively took up 45 minutes on their roll call. Mm -hmm. And the Republicans blasted that out in about five before the networks even switched to them. So uh, they are putting a priority on speakers and less about pretending that this is the pageantry of a regular convention where obviously a roll call is a lot more visually exciting when 19,000 people are all chaining and wearing silly hats. Right. So um, I noticed in some some part of this, and I don't remember what part it was, but there was kind of an audience, like a, like 10 people or something mm -hmm. in a room. You could tell it was, was small. It seemed like there was more than that. I mean, was it more? Were I mean, I, I just wondered what that was. What is it like a like a wait? Like what a, do you what? Which which room are you, uh, on on the show last night? Because uh, remember, yeah. remember, there's also a con a, a a convention that is happening where convention business is happening the in Charlotte. Charlotte. Yeah. And oh. so Trump okay. Trump did go and speak at that in the morning yesterday, and then came back to D.C. Uh, but that that is another thing that's not. Th things are weird now because it's happening in multiple days. Okay, that's probably why I was confused because I thought, for some reason, I thought he was back in D.C. for that, and then and that's where I heard the crowd. And it wasn't, it, but it was weird. It wasn't like a crowd crowd, it was, and they wouldn't, sh and they didn't show them a lot. It was just like a yeah. I, mm -hmm. You just hear there people are going, physical people in in uh, Charlotte okay. that are doing party business. Okay. Uh, Physical people doing party business. Yeah. <laughs> that was like my college years. Yep. <laughs> Physical people doing party business. So hold on. So it sounds like it sounds like if uh yeah, a, a conehead went to college. <laughs> right. Yes, I saw some physical people doing party business. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds exactly right. So uh, based on what you saw last week and what we've seen so far, it's kind of hard to make a comparison. We've only had a day, right? Or, you know, effectively a day of the... I think that there's there's enough that you can see that there are different ways of, of going about it. Number one, the Democrats very obviously wanted to have a lot more of a polished convention. Uh, I think they might have bit off a little bit more that they could chew or maybe tried to be a little bit too particular uh, in that it felt simultaneously very pre-planned but also maybe a little bit boring mm. whereas the republicans are like i don't care if you're terrified you won't be bored yeah like we are going to run out fifty thousand speakers if you hate the speaker they are going to be done the one thing that i can say for night one of the republicans versus night one of the democrats is that night one of the democrats had three what i felt were very impactful speakers John Kasich, a former Republican or a, a Republican mm -hmm. that is voting against Trump, former governor of Ohio. Yeah. Bernie Sanders, very obviously a an, a, a tremendously important figure to a wing of uh, the Democratic Party. And Michelle Obama, a, uh, a legacy of what many Democrats feel is a great time in American history. Right. The problem with the three of them is that they really clash. Uh, John Kasich is going to come out and as he did and say, uh, don't worry about what the Republicans say when Trump says that Biden's going to cave to the radical left. He's not. I know Joe Biden. And then Biden and then Bernie comes out and says, Joe Biden, somebody that we, the radical left, can really work with. <laughs> so uh, uh, don't you got to vote for him because he's uh, somebody that we can we can work with. And then Michelle Obama comes out and says, remember how great the Obama administration was, which Republicans and progressives do not agree on much. Right, right. I'll tell you one thing they agree on that the Obama administration wasn't all that great. Yeah. So, right. uh, uh, <laughs> that was, that was interesting where certainly there was tremendous clashes in tone during the RNC night one last night. And, and, uh, when you look at Donald Trump Jr. and Kimberly Guilfoyle, those are the MAGA crowd, yeah. right? Oh, that yeah. is, Trump rally, red hat, uh, trigger the libs. Uh, let's let's get this patriot a coat. Trump train, woo woo, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Tim Scott and Nikki Haley are 
what I think a lot of Republicans that are put off by the energy of the MAGA movement, what they recognize in a Republican national convention. Mm -hmm. Those two are people that are, that would traditionally be kind of given rising star. They are ready for their close up Mr. DeVille kind of moments. And both of them, I thought delivered on that. The difference between the Democrats and the Republicans is that while the tones were on different planets, the messages were the same that Democrats are running us off a cliff we narrowly avoided disaster in 2016. Let's not give up the progress we've made now. Yeah. Uh, they were different, drastically different volumes, drastically different uh, uh, metaphors. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas Nikki Haley and Tim Scott, both people of color, were discussing, you know, how uh, the Republican Party gave them and their families the ability to achieve. Tim Scott uh, line was my family went from cotton to Congress in one generation that is selling. That is like bedrock. Pull yourself up by your bootstrap. Shining city on a hill. Reagan stuff. Yeah. Uh, not quite the same as Joe Biden is the Loch Ness monster of the swamp, <laughs> which is what Donald Trump Jr. said. Right. But the enemies were the same yeah. in a way that I I did not feel that I feel that uh, one person watching the Neapolitan ice cream of the DNC night one would be like, wait a minute, are we for or against the progressives? Yeah. And also, was Obama good or not? Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I hadn't really considered the the t the cons there is a consistency in what I saw of what little I saw yesterday of RNC stuff. Uh, not in my opinion, not all of it great or heartwarming, but consistent. Um, whereas I didn't really think about that comparison on the DNC. Like I didn't think about that night of speeches. Probably would have been better to maybe split those up uh, over a couple of nights or whatever. I Which mean, I I thought just even uh, splitting them up in the night. Uh, number one, I didn't understand why Michelle Obama closed on Monday. I thought she would have been a better opener. Uh, just get everything, get everything hot, right? Yeah. Like she is a big name. She does motivate everybody, but ultimately she's not a future part of the party. Right. Unless she's going to run, which I think a lot of Democrats would be thrilled, but she doesn't seem to be interested in that. So why does she get the closing? Uh, whereas Bernie... This is his swan song, effectively, right. uh, in the same way that Obama got a swan song uh, in, in 2016. Bernie's probably not going to run for president again. He's going to be somebody in Congress. He's going to be an influential figure on the progressive right. But the dude made a good run of it and uh, got subsumed by the centrist Voltron. And that's, you know, that's that's a wrap, <laughs> man. He had a heart attack. Like, let the man let the man do what he wants. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know why they did that. And if that's the case, then I would have put John Kasich in the middle. The Democrats spent a lot of time catering to Republicans, yeah. uh, specifically over night one and two. Yeah. And I am dubious of that strategy, no matter what poll numbers people showed to me, because I believe that the Democrats should be catering to people that, I don't know, voted in their primary. Mm. <laughs> I think that that would be a good way to pre-qualify who you should try yeah. to get to vote for you in November. Republicans didn't. And as much as some Republicans are turned off by Donald Trump, I don't know what a John Kasich yelling in the middle of a road as a visual metaphor, because he's carrot top now, uh, <laughs> what that's going to be able to do that Tim Scott can't do better, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, no, that to, makes sense. Uh -huh. I mean, do you? so based on what you saw yesterday... What is is there a crescendo of for for the Republicans this week? What is that moment? Do you think if you had to predict, like at what point is it? Is it a Donald Trump speech? If it's not, then who is it? Like what? Where? What is their big like? I don't know. For lack of a better comparison, the Joe Biden speech was hailed even by the likes of Fox News as being cogent and 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 good and powerful. Said when you need to say this idea that we've all said he's too feeble to say anything. I, we think maybe we've overstated that like that. That was an interesting um, moment. Yeah. Joe Biden. Joe Biden has given two great speeches in this campaign. One after he won in South Carolina. And I was lucky enough to be in the room for it. And the second was at the DNC. Yeah. That being said, it went for barely over 20 minutes. And the fact that you in listing off your uh, uh, descriptors of it started with cogent is probably its own lesson. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe, you know, uh, uh, yeah, no, I think, 
<laughs> I think he's. Uh, I think he did a great job. I thought he delivered the only truly great speech of the convention, and I would include Obama. Uh, I think Bernie and Biden gave the best speeches uh, of, of the DNC, and Biden needed to. Biden needed to deliver. The, the, the fact that he, you know, was able to summon up that energy, I think, was incredibly important. Uh, but, Scott, honestly, do you think there's going to be another headliner I don't, than I don't know. Donald Trump. I don't like, know. Of like, course, he's going to be the headliner. Well, he'll be the headliner. But is there? I, I guess what I'm saying is, if everybody else we know that is in the lineup, do you do you have any like, what's the word I'm looking for? Underdogs? You think that are going to blow Scott our minds? Scott Bayo is going to kill. Well, <laughs> are there going to be any sleeper hits in the rest of the week? Somebody we where we just didn't see it coming, and wow, what a browsing thing, you know. And pull, pull. You know, I, I don't. It, it's hard with the RNC because uh, the media tends to focus. The star spot doesn't exist in the RNC like it does in the DNC historically, because yeah. the media puts a lot more attention on the DNC than it does the RNC. So you don't have the Kennedys and the Obamas that like come out and give this stirring speech. And next thing you know, everybody's talking about, Oh, did you hear? Did you hear? Did you hear? That just doesn't really happen to Republicans. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I don't know if there's what, what you are, are more looking for is who's going to have political power going forward. And I think you saw three, if not four of them last night in those final four speakers, Donald Trump Jr., his girlfriend, uh, Kimberly Guilfoyle, Tim Scott, and Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley is is win, lose, or draw in November, a front runner for the Republican uh, nomination in, in 2024 already. Yeah. Do you think there's anything to the rumors that uh, even now, like I know that they, they've officially said, hey, Mike Pence is our guy, but there's a lot of talk that he would that he was going to swap him out for Nikki Haley. Do you think there was ever anything to that? <laughs> Let's swap well, him out. I mean, according according to the book Fire and Fury, there was a little bit uh, a little bit more to the swapping between uh, uh, Donald Trump and Nikki Haley. If you if you believe oh, the rumors, oh. whoa, uh, hey. Oh. Hey, oh, oh. she very vehemently denies it and calls it, and I think rightly, a sexist accusation for a powerful woman. That being said, uh, there's going to be no swapping of the VP in uh, 2020 whether or not but they are both going to run for the nomination we will see you know if donald trump uh gives pence his endorsement if he wins right or if he loses who he endorses going forward but we'll see all right mm -hmm. super interesting i um yeah well i guess i guess i'm uh i'm like everybody else right now like you just every day is like uh like I kind of I'm excited for this part to be over and I'm excited for actual I think the debates are where I'm going to key in. Yes, right. Right? Because not even Cuz it's really easy for for each party to come out and say, "Hey, we're great. Here's what makes us great. Aren't we great? Let's hear let's yeah. listen to a few people yeah. tell us why we're so great." Yeah. They're and, bad, we're great. We're great, they're bad. Like right. that's yeah. I mean, I yeah. The 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 conventions historically are good for two things, one of which doesn't exist. Number one, it's great for gossip. Because everybody who is anybody gets together and everybody hears these stories and they hear who's in favor and who's not in favor and who's who's on the rise and who's on the fall. That simply doesn't exist right now. So you can take that out of the equation. Right. It's also great because you get a sense of where the party is and what the party values. Yeah. Uh, what the DNC told you was that Bernie Sanders is less important than Michelle Obama eight years or, or sorry, four years now removed from office. So and that uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who in any other world would probably be the the star spot person mm -hmm. you would you would mm -hmm. she is far and away got the biggest profile. She is the biggest newsmaker on the left uh but she is very far left she is a democratic socialist she is a scion of bernie sanders and so they gave her like a minute and a half to just second the nomination of bernie which i thought was a real misuse of of her star power i think 
you should have put her out there and said, no, sell Biden. Yeah. Go, you go talk to all your Zoomer friends, all your TikTok kids, <laughs> and and tell them all why they should go vote for Biden. If you want to be a part of the party, you got to you got to stand the nominee. They didn't. And it's because they're afraid. They're afraid of the progressive charges that the uh, Republicans you know, are leveling against them. But to me, that's running scared. I, I don't like that strategy. Well, uh, the Republic, you can't control what the Republicans are going to call you. Yeah, You can't control the fact that they're going to say that Biden is a member of the progressive left. Uh, and, and you can't just say, well, those aren't the facts, folks. You have to, the, you have to tell your own story. If you are explaining, you're losing. And if Biden isn't telling another story about how he's going to bring a moderate democratic vision to the country, and this is not about the radical left and, and these people are, are friends, but they're not driving the bus then I, I think that it, all they did by sidelining their progressive uh, uh, stars is taking away star power. Interesting. I'm looking forward to next week's episode with you because this will be a great... Mm -hmm. We're going to have wrap-up of everything that happened. And if anything weird happened, that's always fun to talk about those things. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And your coverage right now is great. If you guys aren't following Justin, you need to be. Uh, his his new set and his black and white motif and him running around in a tie and making commentary right. on the mic. The stand up. I love it. It's yeah. great. It's super great. So y'all should be uh, watching it. <laughs> Justin, before we go. Oh, by the way, you mentioned uh, you used the idiom uh, running scared. Nice uh, accidental promo of last week's film sack. <laughs> Filmsack.com. We watched Running Scared, the right. fine what, film. Uh, oh, you, oh you watched Running Scared? That's great. Yeah, we the enjoyed the hell out yeah. of it. It was great. Uh, I did anyway. Well, Brian and I were we were biased. Oh, can, we, I, I was already a fan. I love that movie. Yeah, we were huge fans in our youth. So mm -hmm. we were utes. Near ute. Yeah, we were utes. Anyway, uh, so Justin, what else is going on that you want to tell the fine people about today before we go? Well, like you mentioned, we are in the smoky back room each and every night of the Republican convention. Uh, it has been an absolute blast just uh uh, hanging out there in, in black and white and gathering everybody to uh, to watch all this stuff. Last night was just a furnace blast of uh, one speaker after another. Like it, it tells you something that I've done this a few times where I've tried to rattle off everybody that I remember speaking, and I keep forgetting Herschel Walker, one of the most <laughs> famous college football <laughs> players of all time, who apparently is like BFFs with Donald Trump. Who yeah. knew? Yeah. I had oh, no really? idea that... Huh. Yeah, no, Herschel Walker came on and was like telling all these like stories like, oh, yeah, I've known Trump for 30 years. It's the he's my best friend. We have tattoos of each other on, <laughs> on our biceps like it's weird. Um, but yeah, so uh, we've had we had a great time last week. We're having an even better time this week. Uh, uh, the Republican convention is uh, for whatever you want to say, not boring. Yeah. And uh, you can join me at twitch.tv slash Justin R. Young. Of course, follow the Politics, Politics, Politics podcast for all of that recap and the free political newsletter if you want a recap every single day in written form. Recommended. Justin Robert Young. I'll play this for you because I didn't play it last time. The jury will now retire. We'll see you next time. Okay. <laughs> the very last okay. second he said, T and I cut yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. All right. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. Quick email and then we're out of here. Uh, this yep. is from uh, George Brown's very nice message. I just wanted to read it. I said, hey, I want to say thank you to you guys for being a part of the podcast stable that I've listened to since I found podcasts in mid-2008 and seeing and being brought to TMS from instancing via film sack since the start. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my life has been somewhat of a rocky ride since then. You guys have been a big part of the good times. And whilst we've, uh, we disagree somewhat on certain issues, I know there is more we agree on than not. If it wasn't for the podcast, I doubt I would be even on this earth. So thank you. Uh, this is not just to thank you for making my life bearable, but also for keeping me company whilst I complete my degree without TMS, I would not have achieved. I would not have achieved this. So thank you so much. One day I'll hopefully be able to thank you guys in person, but until then, I hope this can convey the gratitude I have for you guys and how much I owe you both for your stable of guests 
Thanks. Uh, I love the show, though. George Brown. Well, George, that was really nice, oh. George. Now, totally. I don't know if Bob Thank just you, did. Did Bob leave when we read that? Did he just hotel room, just get up and leave? Did I think just... he left during my poop stories because they weren't, it wasn't poopy enough. They weren't up to I his really standards. I hoping for more poopy poop dog in my poop story. His his poop standards are high. You got to you gotta. They are. Navigate. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got to, yeah. So I get that. Uh, anyway, George, it, yeah. George, thank you for the email. That was really nice. Totally. Made me happy to hear that. And uh, that's going to do it for the show. Big reminder that uh, this week is not a normal TMSPM week. It's a play date. We're doing that on Saturday right after we record Film Sack. We'll roll right in with you guys and play. That's right. Very excited about that. So that's this Saturday. Let's forget about that, that we don't do a TMS PM. Even if we do play date on a Friday, we right. don't do a PM that week. Yeah. Right. No PM. It's just, it's a swap out. Right. In fact, we could, you know, if we ever felt like it, we could say this week's PM is going to be still privately streamed to patrons, but it will be a game show where that's true. Brian yeah. asks a bunch of trivia questions, or you know, I we, would, I would totally do that. Yeah, I want can, people to pay for it, though. I want, I want people to work hard to get that level. But if they don't, I'll still probably. No, do that. I'm. My whole point is like we we can do whatever we want with that PM slot. We and can. So we can. Bull, bull. And all you can do if you're not supporting it is hear about it afterwards. Yeah, you just hear that it was fun and great, and you have no idea. Mm-hmm. But Brian's right. So go to patreon.com slash TMS and sign up today. Big thanks to everybody who does. And just take advantage of us. We set this thing up monthly and, and it's like ridiculous. People pay a dollar and it's for a whole month of 16 episodes. It's just crazy that we did this. But but do it. Uh, we're dumb and you're smart. So take advantage of us. So go sign up. Patreon.com slash TMS. Frogpants.com slash TMS for everything else. And be, make sure you email us. Uh, just like George, you can send emails to themorningstream at gmail.com. Anytime, anywhere, happy to take your messages. That's going to do it for us. Let's play a song. Do you have a song? I have a song. I just have to. This monitor got really bright all of a sudden. It's like, I don't know if you can see. Oh, but yeah. Why? What happened there? Um, it's my outdoor camera, and it uh, there was a blip or something, so it disconnected oh. and went to the white screen. Oh. Oh. <laughs> all right. You did you did get a little wider there for a minute, which was weird. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tidy tidy whitey. <laughs> um, all right. So I was gonna play a request. I moved the request to tomorrow. We'll get to that one tomorrow. because uh, I just found out Sunday night that uh, the singer Justin Towns Earl passed away. Now he is the son of Steve Earl, um, a great uh, folk uh, folk rock performer. Uh, Justin Towns Earl was partially named after Towns Van Zant. 